Hello, today I'd like to take a look at the Moon Hell. This is a Souls-like combat game that sees you battling your way through demonic hordes to close the gate to hell. Special thanks go to AM Team for the review key. This review is based on 16 hours of gameplay. All opinions are solely the authors. You're all busy people, so let me answer your most pressing question first. Are you going to enjoy it? The 30 second spiel is that this game is a fighting game that draws strong inspiration from Souls games. You'll battle a variety of enemies across different environments as you travel towards the final goal. The combat is focused on being methodical and requires you to manage your stamina carefully. If that sounds like something you'd like, then stay with me and I'll delve deeper into the details. In difficult times of that the Moon Hell is an indie game created by a two man team out of Ukraine. One the premise is that the moon Grimoire has been stolen from the temple where it was being kept safe and suddenly demons appeared hell, across the land, killing everybody and causing lava to scar the landscape. The There's nobody left but you and the demons and it's your job to get back the moon Grimoire. There's a variety of different types that you'll have to learn how to defeat. Visually the game tends towards a darker atmosphere and you'll traverse across five areas, each with their own distinct architecture. But a standout visual feature throughout all the levels is the way the game makes strong use of fire and flame lighting effects, particularly on enemies. You start in a forest with only the moon for lighting. This is in line with the lore of the world, but from a gameplay perspective, the darkness does make it difficult to get your bearings because you can't see much beyond a short distance from your character. It does serve to keep you disoriented and I was lost quite a bit the first few times I tried to navigate it. The first area also has some interdimensional dungeons that you have to traverse in order to clear the way to the next area. These are small self-contained locations that tend to have new weapons at the end. And there's occasional bosses that you have to beat in order to progress. Killing enemies also gives you faith, which you can spend to gain new perks like better stamina regeneration and healing abilities. Later levels are better lit and you can better appreciate the environment and architecture. I recommend anybody who might be a bit put off by the darkness in the first level to push on to at least the monastery catacombs because the forest area is not representative of the entire game. The flow of the game is generally linear. You progress through levels and once you leave you can't go back. The exits aren't always obvious so it's important to make sure to check things as thoroughly as you want before leaving. Exploration is rewarded with better gear and skill books so it's well worth spending a bit of time looking around. But the levels have a straightforward layout. There are some puzzles involved, but you'll pretty much find everything without too much trouble. The story as a whole isn't the selling point of the game, but it's decent enough to provide a justifiable explanation of why your character is battling his way through the demon hordes. Overall, the game should take about a dozen hours to finish. The gameplay is smooth and responsive, and I didn't run into a single bug. Since the game is about combat, let's take an in-depth look at it. The Moon Hell draws a lot from Dark Souls in the way the combat is designed. Attacks use up stamina, but so does defending and rolling, so the pacing is more deliberate, just like in Souls games. A big difference is that there's no healing mechanism at first. You're supposed to use shrines, which are the equivalent of bonfires in Souls games, but they don't regenerate enemies, so you're expected to use them regularly. They're placed nicely, and you can typically find one just before a boss or a difficult section so you're not going to spend too much time running back to where you died. You also don't lose all your faith on dying, just the faith you got since you last saved at a shrine. You've got your normal and strong attacks, and you can block or roll to avoid being hit. They all use up stamina, and you'll only succeed in combat if you understand how to manage it. There's four types of weapons to suit different styles. You start with a sword, which does medium damage and has some armor penetration. Axes do less damage, but have a chance to do critical damage. Hammers hit hard and have the best armor penetration, but swing slow and have the worst reach. Spears have the best reach, but you have to aim carefully and they don't do as much damage as other weapons. The animations are smooth and responsive. I particularly like the way your character spins when you dodge backwards. Three normal attacks becomes a combo. The timing on these takes a bit to get used to. You have to press the next attack before the prior attack connects. So you have to make sure the enemy is vulnerable or you might find yourself unable to dodge. Overall, button mashing is a bad idea. It's more about learning how enemies move and attack and timing your own. And of course, there's a variety of enemies. You start fighting humanoid melee fighters. They swing at you, but they also have a jumping attack that has a small area of effect. Then you'll meet explosive bugs. They're a bit of a glass cannon and a single attack is good enough to kill them but you need to avoid the follow-up explosion. 
Later enemies will include more difficult versions of these. But by far the most challenging enemies are the ones that fire from range. There's explosive traps that will one shot you throughout most of the game. And traps that fire fireballs that you have to dodge. They fire fast and it takes timing to avoid them. Especially when you get close enough to kill them. But later on you'll also come across liches that also fire fireballs. But they also move fast and keep the distance. It's very challenging to get close and still have enough stamina to hit them. All the while avoiding a close up fireball as you swing. On top of that they have what I jokingly call the cheese ball. Because they release a homing fireball that detonates when it gets close enough to you. And if you mistime the roll you'll get one shot. Meaning multiple of these liches is basically the worst case scenario. Luckily one unique feature of the game is that sprinting also works when moving sideways. Without this feature enemies that throw fireballs at you would be almost impossible to beat. Another unique and challenging enemy is flaming knights. Trying to melee them is very difficult because they hit hard and they'll block pretty much every swing you do. It's all about timing and distance. For example using a spear can help you get a reach advantage. Players experienced with similar fighting games will find the early enemies pretty straightforward. But the difficulty curve will jump a lot higher once you meet ranged enemies. The lack of healing and protection means that you'll die most often early on. Even if enemies do become more difficult as you progress. One thing that I would commend the game on in particular is that combat is logical. I didn't find anything added for the sake of making things more difficult that I would call cheesy. If you died it was because you ignored what you were seeing the enemy do. There's boss fights but they follow the same logic as for normal enemies. You can predict them and with a bit of care they're not too difficult. Usually I found myself defeating them in one or two attempts. I appreciated that they didn't have cheese moves that rely on you memorizing the attack patterns of the boss to survive them. There wasn't a blatant use of invincibility frames. If the enemy hit where you were then you got hit. The game advertises itself on being very challenging but the fact that enemies follow logical principles means that learning how they work leads to being able to defeat them. It will take trying again and again to master enemies but it's all about timing your attacks and knowing when and how you can attack. Overall I'd say the combat system is sensible. The devs obviously put a lot of effort into that aspect. The Moon Hell is a combat game that's all about learning how enemies work and how to defeat them. You'll find yourself challenged as you meet new enemies but they work in a logical manner and your perseverance will be rewarded. The world has some interesting visuals and the scope for expansion of the lore and levels. Especially since it seems that the later areas were reduced in size. This is a short little game that should take about a dozen hours to get through. Overall it's a very nice effort from a small two man team. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.